the Jada and Stitches show. Today we have got an adorable little miniature ski hat tutorial for you. Now these make really cute little ornaments but we mentioned them in a live stream the other day and somebody actually said a whole bunch of them strung together would make a cute garland. Totally agree but you can also give them to dolls or if you're going out for dinner and you're bringing someone a bottle of wine why not pop one of these onto the top? How cute is that? It's a great conversation starter. These are super easy to make, they're very fast, they're a scrap project and they're the perfect way to start off our breezy, cold, snowy January 2023. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up some miniature ski hats together. <laughs> In order to make our little miniature ski hats, you need around 10 yards of yarn per color. So 10 yards would be for the cuff and also include your little pom-pom like this guy. I made him all in yellow and green and another 10 yards approximately for the upper. Now that's overestimating, but it's better to overestimate than to not have enough. It's really a scrap project. I'm using a size four medium weight acrylic in three juicy ice creamy colors <laughs> for my little hat today. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle and the hook I'm using is a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a nine in the US. And if you're gonna turn them into little hanging ornaments, you can use a piece of yarn, some string, twine, whatever you might have lying around, a length of about 15, um, I should say 30 centimeters or 12 inches. So that's basically how long you want it, it, depending on how long you want your little hanger. If you're going to be turning these into like a little garland, then you may need shorter pieces. All right, and once you've got all that together, we can get started. We are going to start with the cuff. That is the bottom of the hat. So whatever color you want to make your cuff, you're going to make a slip knot and chain five. You're going to skip the first chain from the hook, find the second one and a single crochet into that. And you're going to single crochet into the next three chains as well. So you're going to have four single crochet at the end of row one. For the rest of the little cuff, we are going to be using the back loops only. So at the end of every row, we chain one turn. We are working back loops only, single crochet. You always skip your turning chain. You're just focusing on these four little single crochets. You're going to be using the back loop, which is this little guy, always the one furthest away from you. And you're going to single crochet into the back loops only, all the way across. You'll still have four single crochet at the end of every row, but you'll get a nice ribbed effect going. So single crochet, back loops only. That creates this nice little rib. Chain one at the end of the row, turn your work. Skip your turning chain, back loops only, single crochet in every stitch across. So every row will have four stitches in it. Chain one turn at the end of every row. Don't forget that it's back loops only, single crochet. And you're going to work 15 rows in total, actually 14 rows, let's do 14 rows in total, of the back loops only single crochet. And I will catch up with you there. Once you have 14 rows, and it's very easy to count, so this is your first row down here. Look for the ridge row and you can count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. 14 rows. You're going to chain one and turn at the end of your 14th row and we are going to bring our two short ends together. Row 15 is still kind of a back loop only thing. We are going to pick up the back loop only of the first stitch of row 14 and we're going to slip our hook through the corresponding foundation chain of the first uh, edge there, so the foundation row, and we're going to slip stitch. So we're back loop only slip stitching to create a seam and that will just close up our little hat nice and neat and tidy. And we got one more in here. Don't let that escape you. There we go. That creates a nice little seam. And that is it. You can fasten off 
weave in your tails and we're going to switch colors to work on the upper. So fasten off, you can flip it inside out if you want, it depends on what side you like the best. So if you like that side or if you like this side, whatever side you like. That will be your outside. We are going to be working around the outside of our hat and you can either work over top of your short tails or weave them in. We're going to take our hat upper color now and make a slip knot. We're going to join our yarn with a single crochet in the top of the seam. So find your seam. I left my, uh, my little tails out here so I could sort of see where the seam was. And you're just going to join your yarn with a single crochet I'm going to work over top of my short tails because why not? And you are going to work a single crochet in the edge of every single row all the way around. So with the seam, there were 15 rows in total. So at the end of this row, you should have around 15 stitches. If you have one more or one less, it's not a big deal. You just want to find an edge stitch along the top. So I like to sort of do it in pairs, like that's that's a row, then there's this little ridge, so I'm going to slip my hook under a, a piece of the edge of that row, and single crochet, and then there's another one, and I'm just going to do this all the way around. So this way I know I get, I sort of get one in the middle, one up the top, one at the middle, we'll sort of you watch those those ridges. And if you just make sure you get sort of the top of the ridge and a, uh, a sort of the top of the, the inner piece, you'll know that you've gotten the edges of all the rows. Once you get all the way around, you're not going to join your row, you're just going to continue to single crochet into what was the first stitch of the last row. So I've got a pretty obvious seam. It's pretty easy for me to know where my rows start and finish. And this way we don't actually have a, a little jogging seam in the upper part of the hat. So you know, all you're going to do is just single crochet in every single stitch all the way around for rows 17 through 22. So row 16 was the row we just finished where we joined our yarn and single crocheted in the edge of every row from the cuff all the way around. This is row 17 and you are going to single crochet in every stitch all the way around. You'll have 15 stitches in each row, so you're not going to lose any stitches, you're not going to gain any stitches, and you're going to crochet around and around and around until you've finished 22, row number 22. So that's going to be six rows of the upper part of the hat in total. Once you've finished row 22 or seven total rows of your little single crochet stitch worked in the round, you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch and fasten off. But you're going to leave a nice long tail because we're going to cinch up the top of the hat with it. So it doesn't have to be too, too long, but long enough that you can weave it in and out of every single stitch across the last row of your hat. So we're going to grab our little yarn needle, thread up our tail, And then you're just going to weave it in and out underneath, so back and forth through all of those little stitches. So in through one and then out through the next, in through the one, out through the next, just like that all the way around. Try not to split your yarn, but this isn't a, this isn't a super delicate procedure. <laughs> and once you've gone all the way around, just cinch it up nice and tight. Be gentle with your yarn and then you can just work a couple of stay stitches. So I like to just run my yarn uh, across the top a couple times. So through a few of those little stitches and then going in the other direction just to make sure that it doesn't want to unravel on me. And then I'll poke the whole thing through to the inside of the hat and I'll work a knot on the inside so right through to the top, and of course now you have this nice little cinched top. We've got a little, little hat shape happening here. Right through the top of the middle of it, I'll turn it inside out. And then I'm going to knot my tail on the inside, weave in my tail a couple times, just to make sure it doesn't want to come undone, and I'll trim any excess. And now we can move on to embroidering our little snowflake.
You want to find the back seam of your hat or pick a part of your hat that you like to be the front and flatten your hat out. This sort of helps give you an idea of the overall front shape that we're working with. We're going to embroider a little tiny snowflake. It looks like this. It's basically three cro crossed lines. So you're going to make an X and then put like a, an, a, a horizontal stitch, I should say a vertical stitch, right through the middle of it. So nothing fancy here. And you can skip this part if you want, or you could even opt to add a little tiny applique if you wanted. But I think this is really cute. All you want to do is thread up a length of yarn of a contrasting color on your yarn needle. You're going to bring your yarn in through the middle, careful not to go through the back of your hat. So I sometimes like to keep a thumb in there. Leave a little bit of a tail hanging. And then you're just going to make three long stitches. So I'm going to start with the straight stitch and I'm going to go in directly above where I brought my yarn out and then come out on a bit of an angle maybe not too far away, because that's where I'm going to have the bottom of my first cross. I'm going to go on an angle over here, and I'm going to bring my needle out just opposite it on the other side. This does not have to be perfect or fancy. <laughs> In fact, I think the weirder or the more kind of off or crooked it looks, the cuter. And then, so there's my three crossed little pieces. I can tighten up on some of the the lines here, poof out my hat a bit, and if I feel like I want to make sure it doesn't go anywhere, I'll bring my needle in somewhere right in the middle of where all those lines cross, and I will try to get my needle underneath all of them and go back out through the same place that I just brought it in. So this just kind of tacks the middle of it down. Again, it's not super pretty, it's not super fancy, but it does the trick. And then all you have to do is just kind of pull out those little pieces and you've got like a little snowflake or a little star. Really cute, flip it inside out, take those two tails, knot them together very gently. You don't want to pull your embroidery out of position. So I'm just going to do a simple little granny knot. And then you can trim your tails. This is not going to be worn by anybody, so you don't actually have to weave in the tails if you don't want to. Of course you can, for neatness sake. But I'm just going to trim my tails. And there's the little snowflake or star embroidery done. Let's make a pom-pom. I'm going to make a yellow pom-pom for the top of my little ski hat. So first you want to start with a short length of yarn, maybe around 15 centimeters or 6 inches. And you're going to pass it between your two middle fingers. So you're just going to let it sit right there between your two middle fingers. Then you're going to take the end of your yarn, you're going to hold it with your thumb and forefinger, and you're going to wrap it around and around and around your four fingers, just like this, about 30 to 35 times. Try to keep your other yarns from getting tangled. <laughs> about 30 to 35 times, and of course you don't want to get that little short tail wrapped up in it. And once you've got that little, after a while you can get your thumb out of the way, you just basically want to do this 30 or 35 times. Once you've wrapped 30 to 35 times, I did actually 35 wraps around my hands, um, but you basically can do it as much as you need to um, to get a, a kind of thick-ish looking pile of yarn around you. You're going to take those two little ends that should still be tucked down here somewhere, pull them up around your, your two middle fingers, hold them nice and tightly, so I'm going to try and do this on camera. Sometimes it helps to like do it against a, uh, a table, but if you can, tie yourself a little knot. This one doesn't have to be super tight. It's just basically to kind of bisect your yarn so that you can carefully slide it off your fingers. Then you're going to tie this really, really tight. So tie that as tightly as you can, not a second time, maybe even a third. You want this to be nice and tight. Try not to let your, your little yarns sort of sneak in underneath it. And then you're going to hang on to those tails and you're going to snip every single one of those loops. So 
I find it helpful to kind of stick my, my um, scissors in underneath some of the loops and kind of gently pull up so that I'm roughly cutting them all to be the same length. And if you don't get them all on the first pass, that's okay. You can just sort of look to see if you missed any. Then you're going to sort of turn it and do the other side. Once you've snipped all those loops, you'll have something that looks like this. And you can sort of run your fingers through it. It looks like kind of a crazy gigantic pom-pom. It'll be really, really big, but now we want to trim it down. So you're going to want to get like a little garbage can or a bowl or something for this so that you can trim all of your ends into the bowl. It'll keep it kind of compact and it won't end up going all over the place. Um, embroidery scissors are what I'm using. You can use any scissors you want for that. Oh, look, I just found another little loop. Ha ha. And all you're going to do is just start trimming your aim is to make it so that all of those pieces are roughly the same length and the more you sort of snip and get them all kind of um, shortened the more it's going to sort of puff up a little bit so if you have to just stop every once in a while and give it a little bit of a, a squish and keep on trimming Alright, once you've got it trimmed down, it's going to be a lot smaller than it was when it started, but that's kind of the idea. Um, the, the more your yarn wants to unravel, the better a pom-pom it'll make. So sometimes I say that sort of the cheap acrylic yarns that are really, really splitty make the best pom-poms. Anyway, after a while, you can even brush it if you want with a, with a brush or a comb, and that will help kind of split it up. You'll get what looks like a very nice little pom-pom shape going. And you wanted to keep track of those two little original ties that you used because you're going to attach it to your hat with those ties. So I'm going to get my bowl of fluff out of the way, grab my little hat, and you're going to take one by one each of these ties and pull them down onto, into the inside of your hat over top of, of a stitch. So they're not going to go through the same place. This is just a really easy way to tie. So I'm going to pull one down into the inside of the hat. There we go. And then I'm going to make sure I'm not going through the same place. I'm going to pull the other one down. There we go. And I'm going to carefully turn it inside out so I can see both of those tails. And I'm going to make sure they're I'm going to pull on them both like pretty snugly to make sure that that pom-pom is right up against the top of the hat. And then I'm going to tie a nice tight knot. I might even do it three times. Again, you can weave it in, you can trim your ends, doesn't really matter. This is just the inside. I'm just going to trim my little tails here. There we go. And that attaches my little pom-pom to the top of my ski hat. Now, you can from here add a little tail if you wanted to. So if you're going to add a little um, hanger, you can just do the same thing. Take the two ends of your ribbon or yarn and pull them right down into the inside of the hat in the same places that you pulled those two tails down into. Knot it and then it'll hang just like this, like a little hanger up top. Or if you're going to turn them into a garland, you can, you can attach a little bit of yarn here, make a short little chain, like a little chained loop, and just sort of attach them all in a row that way or you can just leave it like this and put it on a very small doll. <laughs> However you want to use your little miniature ski hat is up to you. And there you go, an adorable little ski hat that you can use in a myriad of ways. And it's such a fun little scrap project, super cute, super quick. And it's a great conversation starter. I would give out a bunch of these. <laughs> in fact, hang them on trees in your neighborhood and see if people like, notice them and want to take them because it's kind of a fun little thing to do. It's kind of like sharing a smile on a cold, snowy day. We hope you enjoyed making these adorable little miniature ski hats along with us, and we will see you very soon here on the Jada and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and welcome to 2023. Bye, everybody.
Hi everybody, Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.